Can you give me numbers? How much have you made so far? What's the turnover? What's your investment? Before you did this, what did you both do? Paying yourself a salary? Are you profitable? Is there an insurance element? How are you different? Uh, Tell me exactly what the terminion is for. What is your percentage ownership in it? If you're thinking of getting any of these lions into your business, <laughs> or you're thinking of understanding how to pitch to these incredible lions in the lion's den, Nigeria, then you probably want to listen to every single thing that I'm going to be sharing in this video because I'm going to take it one step at a time. I'm going to bring out all the flesh with no bones in it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie Che. You're welcome to Personality Highlights. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing something very, very epic. Um, but before I go into that conversation, if you're very new to my channel, thank you so much. I appreciate the love so far. Um, please take this minute to hit on the red subscribe button to be a part of um, my community and of course don't forget to turn on post notification so that you always get a lot of my video every time I share new content and of course if you like um, the kind of content that I share here don't forget to give this video and all the other videos I share in this community um, a big thumbs up so let's get into the conversation of the day um, after watching close to 30, more than 30 businesses pitch, right? Um, I really have a very strong conviction within me that I think I understand where the, most of these lions are coming from. So if you're thinking of understanding the dynamics around the kind of questions these lions ask, guys, I'm talking about all of them. Now, um, let's just do an official introduction into this beautiful lions um, in the den. We have five lions in the den. Um, and Bolaji Balogu is an investment banker with over 35 years um, in investment management. He is a big deal when it comes to investment in Nigeria. Um, he is the CEO Chapel Hill Denham and is an investment company. And they really have huge clients, if you ask me. Um, the other person we have is Kiari Buka. He is also a big name. He's a big name. Um, Sarah Group Investment is actually another. Um, he's a co-founder also and co-partner in that firm. He's doing very well for himself. And it's really amazing to see um, the serial investors in this particular reality show. The next person we have is a beautiful lady called um, Adeni K. Obundesi, and she is the creative director she is the founder she is the anything you want to call her she she is a big designer uh, in rough and tumbles um, which specializes in children where they, they've been the fashion how i mean they've been a fashion name for a long time in nigeria and she has over 30 years in um of course in experience when it comes to her, her line of business and niche fashion and also in a lot of other businesses um, we also have mr dan Ngerem. he is i mean these guys are big shots these guys are all big shots um he has he has a lot you know he is the founder um of hessen um hessen group I guess, and um, his company is he's into oil and servicing. He's into Nigerian Institute of International like affairs, standard businesses. He's into TV and media property rights. <sighs> he's a big shot too. Um, and then we also have um, another person, Paul um, Wanibe. He is the CEO of the Landmark Group. Um, guys, these guys are all big big names and their household names in the Nigerian space. Most of us actually know their stories and we're so excited that they are in the den with us. But guys, away from their titles, um, this um, very, very important things that I just showed you up earlier in these videos are the most important things that they look out for when you're looking out in any business or they're trying to see if they can agree or disagree with you in a business. Now, when it comes to somebody like, um, I'm going to save the and i'm going to say something in this video i'm going to tell you that some of these investors um are standalone investors like they are so they're big risk takers that they are ready and willing to take a lot of risk um and i i think i'm going to mention the two stand stand alone lions that i see in the lions den but i'm going to be saving that till the end of this video so let's start with the very first person i'm um, looking at somebody like mrs adenike gulesi 
there is always one thing we're going to hear her say in any of the episodes in the lion's den and it is you don't have a business and guys this is one of the biggest things that they would hint to most of the entrepreneurs who come into this den why do they say these things i mean it is literally um one of the most popular questions statements that are dropped to these entrepreneurs why would mrs adenike why would um any of the lions say you don't have any you don't have a business or your business is not investable um the structure of your business matters a lot of course your name your finances your figures you have to have it right you have to have a product you have to have a roadmap you have to probably have started something now one of the things that we have noticed also is that um apart from this statement by mrs adenike that you don't have a business there's also going to be this statement that you're going to hear from mr paul and it says that this business is not investable and basically when they say business is not investable probably you don't have a product probably they are not seeing why they should buy into your business probably your business doesn't look like it's scalable and you know these are the reasons why most of these lions will tell you we're going or we're not going now another tough um question statement we would also hear from somebody very very intriguing is Kiari Buka's question of what are your numbers? What are your numbers? 2018, 2019, 2020. Like he wants to know the numbers. He wants to know if you are being profitable. In fact, that question is also another question. Are you profitable in business? Is a question he's going to ask to make sure that you are in tune. You understand if you you understand what your profit and loss um, sheets look like. So these three questions um, that I've just mentioned right now are the statements that you'd always hear from the lions. Now another touching story um, question and um, statement you're going to hear from somebody like Mr. Dan Garim is, you know, for somebody who is in the international affairs space, he would always talk about sustainability, he would always talk about um, safety, and so he's one of those persons that has really challenged a lot of the entrepreneurs who have come into the Lions Den to pitch their businesses. He's talked so much about safety measures, he's talked so much about um, why they should have an impact, you know, and looking at the kind of person Mr. Dan is, if you're thinking of having him into your business, guys you need to be thinking of sustainability because that is the first thing he's going to hint at you're he supposed to be looking at having something that's going to be on the global stage because this is what he's going to talk about like looking at mr dan's previous episodes um interaction negotiations counter um constructive criticism sometimes we're going to notice that he's going to talk about footprints um is it your living carbon footprints your safety footprints are not right your digital footprints are not right so he is really really into impacts so if your brand your business does not have any of that it's going to be a huge challenge because he can throw you under the bus um, with any of his statements or his questions now another question or statement you might always get from somebody like mr um Balog, Balaji Balogu is Tell me about yourself. What's your story? Now, I've noticed this is one of the things that makes Balaji get into any business or not even um, to think of going into it. I mean, I, I, looking at the way he asked that question to this guy, the brown rice guy, um, Betcham Brown Rice, um, because there was no consistency, you know, they couldn't relate what he was doing from his background. He ended up not even getting that deal. Um, looking at um, there's so many Travelo, you could find out that because Travelo could talk about his story coming from a, um, a family that didn't have enough, trying not to just um, you know drop out of school but stay in school, learn about entrepreneurship and build his business, made Baladi look at him as okay, this guy is ready to go. Um, looking at the story of this Dayton guys, when they said, tell me a little about you, and we realized that when they were talking about themselves, about their businesses, it was just more glaring that, you know what, I'm not going to invest because your business doesn't look like it's a structure. So basically, if you're looking at these five lions, there's always a strong um, thing that attracts them or just takes them away from your business and basically um, I think these are the things that I just mentioned now if your business does not have that structure um, Mrs. Adenike we all know she loves branding she loves packaging and of course if your business has that um, you might be able to run away from her scrutiny and um, for Paul Luanibe he is always because he's in the hospitality business he's always looking out for customer service and he's always looking out for businesses that are specialized in a particular niche he kind of chose a lot of entrepreneurs you know under the bus every time he tries to find out exactly what they're niching down to so if you're really thinking of buying into Paul Wanibe you need to pro probably be thinking about niching down having a specialty because that is one of the things that would actually propel him 
I'm looking at Mr. Dan, of course, and sustainability has to be something that you look into. If you have any of that green factors in your business or your brand, he's definitely going to grab. And one other thing I've noticed about Mr. Dan, Mr. Dan is that he loves um, people with integrity. I mean, looking at the story of this SRG guy who said he was paying um, interest rates at over almost 98%. I mean, the sincerity at which he was able to share this, I think was one of the things that also propelled Mr. Dan to stand alone in investing in that business of 70 million, you know, even at the business that was actually losing money and was in a lot of debts. Um, so that's one thing, very, very strong observation I've, I've discovered about it. Now, one other thing I've noticed about also most of the scenarios is if you're looking at uh, Mrs. Adenike, for example, I've noticed that she has never, so far um, from the episode one to eight, I've seen she has never invested in any fashion brand. And basically, I think one of the reasons is because of conflict of interest. Um, so if you're probably an entrepreneur or you're a business owner and you're probably into the fashion line, you're looking for someone like Mrs. Adenike to get into your business, I don't know, but you really have to be a genius um, for you to get her in. Because I think um, one of the reasons is because of conflict of interest. I think I'm just I'm just saying um, I'm not saying that I understand everything that has to do with business pitching and all that I'm not trying to sound like really high tech pro but I'm just trying to share this um, information based on my observations you know after watching scrutinizing carefully analyzing the show um, the lens there that I've seen so far now one other thing also that I've noticed is um, when we look at somebody like um, Kiari Buka. Kiari Buka um, has been, he's into a lot of sector. He is, I, I will call him a multi-dimensional um, expert that has almost gotten into almost all the sectors. I mean, the banking sector, he's been there. In the security sector, he's been there. He's just everywhere. The pharmaceutical, he's there. Um, so one of the things that Kiari Buka, I've noticed also is that he has not invested in any architectural um, you know, the very first episode we saw the 989 pitch and he said because of conflicting interests that um, he probably had a business like that and probably that was why he didn't want to go in. So you probably want to check it right and um, if you're looking out for any of those names to get into your business because you're in the same niche with them. Um, looking at Mr. Dan too, you know, I've not, though we've not seen any hospitality business really come out, but he's that kind of um, investor who's tries to be very very careful about investment i would also say the same thing for mrs adenike um she is not a standalone lion i mean i've never seen her invest in a business alone she always loves going to the businesses um any investment that has at least maybe bolaji or kiari or somebody um she i have noticed that she's really not a standalone um investor i mean the two really crazy serial investors that I've seen in the Lions Den so far, I would not like. Number one is Mr. Dan. He has done a lot. Like the, seven, the SRG guy, I mean, that was a crazy investment. That was a risky investment and he was willing to go in on it, um, even though with a big bite. But I mean, it was really, really understandable. And I mean, I love the fact that um, he can look at these businesses and say, okay, you know what, I can come in and help. I'm looking at the way he has, you know, also decided to give up money to this honeybee guy, Chelsea honey shows that this guy even with his harsh scrutiny safety precaution measures international global you know criticism and all that he is human um he has a lot of empathy and if he sees your business as a good business he might be willing to get into it now looking at another stand alone investor i'm going to say hmm, mr bolaji is one of them he has done crazy investment like he sometimes he just he's willing to okay maybe it's because of his 35 years of investment he knows the sectors he understands it very well he knows how to manipulate his way around he knows how to make the best of any situation and really at this moment i see him as one of the um lions that has invested the most in most of these entrepreneurs and he has this crazy thing about believing in people or investing in people because of their stories um guys i don't know if i'm making any sense from anything i've said so far but if i am throw in your comments in the comment section i've had fun doing this review i've been watching this reality show i'm still watching it i'm so happy that um we have something um called the lion's den right now in nigeria i mean Back then, in the days, we all know Shark Tank is, is an American business reality show. I mean, we've been looking for a Shark Tank, we've been looking for a Dragon's Den, and right now we have the Lion's Den in Nigeria. And of course, me, I am a super fan, and that's why I come here to do the reviews on this. Guys, you can always check out my older videos, and for more content, you can also stick to this channel. Guys, I don't know, but I am, this is where I'm going to hold, um, 
put put down the curtains i think i might be able to share some insight on what will make anybody be a part of your business um please don't forget to hit on the subscribe button and like comment share your thoughts on what you think about the lions den so much are you watching it what would you want to see more in my channel um for now i'm so happy thank you so much for your watch time